Hello! Um, this is a tutorial video for P5.js about a particular function, a function I really love, uh, called Create Graphics. And I'm kind of shocked that I haven't made this video yet because this is one of the classic things that comes up in every single intro programming graphics course that I've ever taught. So let's take a look at the problem. So let's say I'm just, I just learned to program and I'm making a very simple sketch where what I want to do is I want to say if mouse is pressed, draw, uh, draw an ellipse at mouse x, mouse y, and make that ellipse um, 64 <laughs> uh, pixels in diameter, and make that ellipse white with a stroke of white. All right, so this is a very simple sketch. All it's doing is when I press the mouse, I'm going to draw an ellipse. Now notice that background isn't set up. So, Here's what I'm doing. Now, let's say what I want to do is I want to see it, um, I want to see also something animate over top of this. You know, an example that, of that could be like, I want to actually draw something. Well, let's just do that right now. What if I wanted to draw, Alka suggested this in the chat, draw a pen or something where the, the mouse is. So uh, let's, let's just have a, um, another circle stand in for that pen. So I'm going to make a circle that's a, that's a different color and a little bit smaller, also at mouse x, mouse y. It's always going to be there because, uh, and maybe it changes color or something when I click the mouse, I don't know. But let's see, okay, so I'm gonna put that other circle there. Oh, well that's, oh, whoa, whoa, okay. So this is no good because I'm drawing the background and setup, everything, everything, everything draws a trail. I never erase that background. How could I have something that I'm drawing to not erase the background and something that I'm drawing where I do erase the background? Well, <laughs> Create Graphics is the answer to this question. What Create Graphics does is it allows you to make this, this canvas, this thing right here, I can make, when I say Create Canvas, I've made this. What Create Graphics does is it actually makes another canvas. The only thing that's different, it's the canvas in the computer's mind. You don't see it. It's stored in memory. So um, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, uh, whoops, let's call this, um, I, don't, I, I often call it canvas, but let me, mm, what's another set of canvas context graphics? I'm just going to call this a graphics. And I'm going to say in setup, graphics equals create graphics. And I'm going to also make it 400 by 300. Now what I'm going to do is whenever I want to draw onto that off-screen thing in the computer's mind, I'm going to say graphics.background. And if mouse is pressed graphics.fill, graphics.stroke, graphics.ellipse. So anything that I want to draw to that off-screen canvas that's not the one that I see, I can now reference it. And again, graphics is my made-up variable name. This could be kitten canvas, kitten graphics, whatever it is. I'm just creating this off-screen buffer. Okay. So now let's refresh this. Whoa, what's going on here? I don't see it. So you have to remember, just because you draw something doesn't mean it's there and you see it. Once you've made this off-screen canvas, you have to explicitly add it to the screen. So I'm going to do that now. How do I do that? I'm going to say image graphics 0, 0. So the way that you take an off-screen canvas and place it you, is, is with the image function. As if it was like a JPEG you loaded, it's the same thing. It's a rectangle of pixels of some size with some stuff happening in it. All right, so let's look at this now. And we can see, look at that. So now and now, oh, whoa, what's going on? So this is the sad truth. The sad truth is I've run afoul of the world that we live in today. Oh, back in the day when I used to program with the snow up to here, we didn't have these screens with multiple dis pixel densities and high blah, 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 retina this and high density this. There's a little bit of an issue going on, which is that I am working with a high density display. And so in, in that case, there's actually four pixels for every one, and it's kind of mismatched what's happening in the off-screen buffer, the off-screen canvas and the, the on-screen one. So I'm going to have to do something <laughs> just to fix this right now. And I hope this doesn't happen to you. I'm just going to say pixel density one. 
So I'm gonna say, hey, whatever kind of screen you're on, just ignore that and just have a regular pixel density of one. And that should hopefully fix this. And you can see it did. So you can see now that I have this animating circle and I have the background uh, canvas. If you didn't want to use pixel density one because you're kind of losing some quality or something that was really important that you're doing, you could also uh, not say pixel density one, double the number of pixels for the off-screen graphics. In other words, for the, 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 the default canvas is going to be handled for you, but now I could double those pixels and then shrink them back down when I show them. And I think this would then, it's the same thing, but I've retained, it's hard for you to see this. I don't know if you can see this. See the quality of that particular ellipse. Let's see if this shows through versus if I say pixel density one um, and go back to this. Uh, let me go backwards again and there we go. You can kind of, can you see the difference there? The sort of a little bit of fuzziness. But anyway, this is not the primary thing that, I'm, that, I, that I want to talk about. I want to just look at the fact that Create Graphics is a way of creating this off-screen um, um, off buffer. So, so there's a lot that you could do with this. For example, um, let's just, uh, let's say I am not actually going to draw this, uh, draw with the mouse. So I'm going to have a uh, variable called x and set that to a uh, variable called x and a variable called y. I'm going to set those to 50, 50. I'm going to make a create graphics that's 100 by 100. Um, I'm going to have the, uh, I'm going to draw the ellipse there and I'm going to say x plus equals some random number. I'm just going to move, uh, I'm going to move x and y around randomly. And let's make this smaller. Uh, so let's see what happens here. And I'm actually also going to add a background to draw. So look, so now I have that and, and let's just see, just to, sh to see what's going on here, let's make the background for the graphics object this. So you can see that is now, that's an off-screen uh, element that I'm drawing onto the screen. So there's no reason why I couldn't do something like, oh, let me draw it twice. And now I see the same pattern repeating. And maybe what I could actually do is say push and uh, translate, you know, 200 comma 200, rotate by some angle and draw the image again. Say pop and I could create an angle variable. And now I could say angle plus equals 0.01. Whoops, uh, angle, <laughs> my E key still does not work. And you can see, ah, now, and, and let's make that go a little faster. And let's say uh, image mode center. Uh, and here we go, we can see now this, that thing that I'm drawing in an off-screen canvas is spinning. So it's a way of creating, there's so many ways we could mix and match these. You know, I could certainly, I could tint it. So once it's a separate image, there's no reason why I can't manipulate it. And actually, what I'm going to do in another video, which is going to be in a different playlist, but I'm going to look at how I could take a 2D graphics context and make it a texture in a 3D world, which will expand on this idea even further. So um, Kelly in the chat is asking, is the create graphics context always a rectangle? Would there be any way to make it polygonal, if I pronounce that word correctly? Now. Yes. I mean, yes and no. So by definition, an image on the computer is a rectangular grid of pixels. There is no other way it can be stored because it is actually just an array of numbers, of colors. However, there's no reason why we couldn't have certain pixels be transparent. Let me show you what I mean by that. What if I actually never... Um, okay, so first of all, let me fix this. Let me put this somewhere where we can see it, that first version of the image. Let me put it at a 100 comma 100. So we can see this is the sort of plain canvas that I'm drawing on. This is the one spinning around. Why not? What if I wanted it to appear circular? Well, there's no reason why I had to draw that background on it. An off-screen canvas will actually begin as fully transparent. Look what happens now. 
So look at this. When it's fully transparent, you now it's still rectangular. I can't expand off of it, but there's, I could create the illusion of it being circular. So now what I could do is I could have said at the beginning, draw an ellipse that's at the middle that has a diameter of 100 and make that ellipse, uh, what should I, uh, gray. Whoa. Oops, I forgot. This is a classic mistake. I wanted to make that ellipse gray, but I forgot to say graphics.fill. So now it looks like I have this like circular thing. And by the way, I could, um, there's no reason why I couldn't just move that one around with the mouse. So it looks like it's a circular thing and it's behind this one. Now, the thing is, it's actually not circular. I'm getting lucky, but you can see how that thing walked off of that circle. So I would probably have to do something. Oh, one thing I could do, um, there's probably a way that I could, I, I could always keep those edge pixels transparent or I could constrain the motion of that particular ellipse. I mean, I'm just like spinning my wheels, spinning my gears here, just trying random things. Um, I'm gonna pause for a second to see if anybody else in the chat has any questions of any features I could add. Couple notes have come in from the chat that are worth mentioning. One is that everything in P5 is wrapping native HTML5 canvas functionality and there is a clip function that's part of the native HTML5 canvas. So that's something that you could investigate perhaps using as well. Um, I haven't looked into that, but I will look into that. Um, there's all, I'm also being told breaking news that, uh, I, f I forgot about this, that if I wanted to dynamically figure out the scaling, um, the pixel density function, I'll show you this. If, so if I call pixel density with a number, this is me specifically setting a pixel density. But if I call it without an argument, it's actually going to return to me the current pixel density, which is one because I set it. But if I uh, don't set it and I call it, you can see that it's two. So this is, something, this is something that I could potentially use to dynamically determine the, uh, the pixel density and scale the off-screen canvas to be the, right, the same as the on-screen canvas. But again, that's a little bit of an aside here. So, Here's, uh, here's some exercises for you to try. Um, you can, um, sh if you make of something, you can share it in the comments or tweet me at Schiffman. But one thing you do, could you make a particle system where the elements of the particles, the, the each particle is actually an off-screen canvas that has some kind of like algorithmic thing happening on it. Um, could you create a, a, a drawing system where the user gets to draw and then the drawing is shown tiled in multiple different ways? Um, uh, so, the, I, um, you know, what if you use like instead of either just erasing the background or not erasing the background, what if you use like an alpha um, as the, part of the background so you see these um, kind of like fading trails. There's a lot of possible things that you could uh, look at and do. So I hope you make some more stuff with Create Graphics um, in P5. And if you're interested in looking at this same topic but applied in WebGL, look for a link in this video's description to that. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.